So this is what I'm going to be working on today. I picked it up from Facebook Marketplace for about 20 bucks. Um, unfortunately, it's made out of my worst nemesis, chipboard. I don't know if you saw in one of my early videos, I attempted to paint chipboard and it did not go very well. So going to be doing that again because this is one of my last pieces that I have left and I can't pick any more up because we're in lockdown. So doing it, um, painting it black and gold because that's what my Instagram followers voted for, like all eight of them. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Wish me luck. So I'm just giving it a thorough clean with some sugar soap and water. Uh, the cleaning is a very important part of your prep just to help the paint adhere to the surface. As you can see, I'm using way too much water. Um, it actually did cause some damage to the cork board that I had to fix up later on. So I've just been going over the piece looking for where it's damaged and I've been peeling off um, the laminate as much as I can and then sanding the cork where it's been swollen so that it comes back down to the normal size. Um, after that I'm going to glue it and then put on some wood filler. I think that this is a good time to mention that this is not a tutorial video, this is just me having a go, experimenting and seeing what comes of it. So you're just here for the journey. Um, this drawer is very stuck because of where the cork has fallen. Friggin' cork board. I don't know if this was the right thing to do or not, but my thinking was that if the laminate started to peel after I'd applied the paint, then the fresh paint would just go along with it. So I tried to peel back until I couldn't peel it anymore. Uh, last time I did this, I just sanded, like I didn't peel off the damages, I just sanded it down. And you could see the difference between the cork and the laminate through the paint. So this was the way I decided to approach it this time. I'm just using Mod Podge glue because that's all I had available to me. Last time I didn't do this and I ended up having loose bits of cork get stuck in my paint and then drag throughout the entire piece. So this time I'm hoping that the glue will settle the cork down a bit and it won't happen again. So I'm going to let that dry overnight and while I wait, well one thing I'm going to do while I wait, ooh, free shoulder pad anyway while I wait I'm going to be cleaning up this poopy so don't think I need to film that but I just wanted to let you know that that is something I'm going to be doing I'm going to be using some spray and wipe and I'll also be disinfecting inside the drawers so this is the next day and the glue is all dry now and look it's not peeling away when I rub my hand over it so I think that's a good sign um, while you weren't looking, I did do another coat of glue. So this is after two coats of glue. I just applied some wood filler with my spatula. Eventually I give up and I use the spatula I was born with. I'm just trying to smooth it out here. It does take me a very long time to do. I think I put way too much wood filler on. I'm not actually that fast in real life. I actually use this technique on lots of patches all over the dresser, but I'm only really showing you the one because I didn't want this to be a two hour long video of me wood filling in patches.
I let it dry overnight and then I sand it down until it's nice and flat. I realized at this point that the edging and the legs were actually wood with paint. So all of the wood filling and everything that I had done up until this point was pointless because I ended up just sanding it all off. I use ESP to help the paint stick to the surface and I'm just using a green scara sponge to apply it as per the instructions on the can. I also gave it a scuff sanding. It didn't say to do that on the instructions but I thought that that would be helpful. Um, so I just leave it to set in for five minutes and then wipe it off and then let it dry for 90 minutes. I'm just applying the first coat of paint and I'm using lead by Pureco in a silk finish. I'm going to link the product for you in the description. I'm very sorry about the talking noises in the background. That's my partner gaming. Gamers got a game. Um, I had to paint inside this day, unfortunately, because it was very windy outside and I didn't want debris getting stuck in my paint. As you can see, the first coat is quite horrendous, but the second coat is where the magic happens. Look how much more coverage I'm getting. I end up doing three coats and then some touch-ups. This is one of my favorite colors. When I bought it online, I did think that it was going to be black, but um, when I started painting, it turned out to be more of a really, really dark navy blue. Although, watch in a couple of seconds, it changes to a grey for no reason at all.
I dry brushed in some details with gold metallic paint and I don't know if you can see but there were some patches just on the drawers where the cork board had shown through so I cover it up with the gold paint and it adds a bit of texture so it actually turned out pretty cool. I use the same dry brushing technique on the edges as well. I also do it on the sides, the legs and the front of the piece. Around the edge I do about three coats of this building up the texture and the colour. I accidentally dropped one of the mirror panels and it smashed into pieces but I didn't think that a Queen Anne dresser could be without its mirror so I'm just turning that panel into a jewellery holder and I'm using little picture hooks as earring hooks. Later I get my partner to screw in some drawer handles as necklace and bracelet holders. I finished off with Purico's eggshell sealer and that is the biggest drip. That was so hard to clean off my floor. So I use Purico's eggshell sealer. I'm applying it with a fusion application sponge and this was not the best technique. It looks really good from this angle but from where I was standing it was so hard to wipe on it was kind of going on like glue and then when I had finished there was lots of streaks and you could see where it had been overworked. I give it a very, very light sand between coats and prior to doing this, I accidentally scratched it with my fingernail and some of the paint came off. I had to do touch up, so I feel like a gust of wind could blow the paint off at this point. I was super nervous doing this and was as gentle as possible. After reading the instructions, I use a damp cloth. I made a little sponge myself, one that was smaller and easier to maneuver. This doesn't dry very well. It dries quite cloudy and I wonder if things would have been better if I had have followed the instructions the first time. I was at a bit of a loss and didn't know how I was going to fix this mess. So I ended up contacting the Purico company asking for help with the sealer and they were so lovely they got back to me and they suggested that I add some paint into the sealer because I was using a darker colour and dark colours can sometimes get a cloudy appearance when you put sealer on top and I thought this was great because I have used this technique before but wasn't really sure why I was doing it. I was kind of just doing it because I saw other people doing it but now I know you learn something new every project. 
When I went to do it though, I sanded my last coat and it kind of, it came up nice. So I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna do a third coat. So that means I'm finished and it's definitely, it's not perfect. It does look like it has been hand painted, but the reality of it is it has been hand painted. And even though I was so gentle and patient with this piece, I mean, you saw, I've got evidence that I was <laughs> very patient, very gentle. It has got lots of imperfections and I'll show you what I mean in the photos, but I don't think these imperfections have ruined it. I think that they do add a bit of character or maybe I'm just telling myself that so I don't feel bad. <laughs> um, that's gonna be it for me. I'm gonna set you up with the, some staged photos. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. I decided not to do any staging because I was scared that anything on top of the piece would scratch it. I'm also not selling it for 30 days because I'm waiting for that cure time and then I'll do a scratch test to make sure that it's actually a quality piece and ready for sale. So you can see, um, we'll come back to it. That's the side, pretty good. So here's the top. Um, you can see that it's quite textured, but I don't know, I think that it's supposed to be. I quite like it and it's got an absolutely beautiful sheen to it. So that's the front. I am absolutely in love with those little handles. They're so sweet. This is the other side so you can see a little bit of damage on this side. There's spots where I sanded but you can hardly notice them and if you did I don't think they matter. Over here is the jewelry holder. So I absolutely adore how this turned out. I think that was a very happy little accident. And that's it.